This is David. Um, I'd like to have a little brief intro to this uh, video that you're about to see. Um, replacing an entire brake line on this 97 Grand Am uh, from the ABS modulator back to the rear, left rear wheel. I uh, did it in three pieces, doing the rear first, then a three, three foot section at the front, and then measured the, the distance in between to find the pre cut, uh, the closest pre cut section I could at an auto parts store. And I did this using the fittings that came on the uh, store, that, that came from the store, along with some unions. Um, after it was all done, just bolted it all together, and it's been intact now for six months. And I've inspected it from time to time. These brakes are terribly important in a car, and then we wouldn't want to uh, keep a car on the road that is unsafe to drive. The other lines in this vehicle, if you'll notice, there's a fair amount of rust on it, are all intact and in good shape. I checked that first. It's a college student car. Uh, it doesn't have the money to buy anything much better at this point until it gets that uh, good first job. Um, speaking of money, um, if you could find it in your heart to contribute anything to this channel, anything at all, if you'd make some use of these videos, I'd appreciate it. Now, there's a link right here that you can follow to do that. Okay, so I hope you enjoy the video. And um, it took me four hours, uh, probably thirty, forty dollars in costs on the, on the lines. Um, and I, if you need to do, if you want to do something like this, it can be done by a home mechanic and done safely. So thanks for watching. So the problem began with a. Uh a loss of pressure in the brake pedal. Did a little research here. A little searching around this car. Grand Am. We found when we put some more fluid in that it started running out pretty much right right in here. You see this line is rusted among other things right about here and turns out to be coming into a small U-shaped hose, brake hose going to the back wheel. And there is in addition here another steel line that actually connects to the back of the brake drum. So and I measured this section out. It's about three feet long from the hose here. What I want to try to do is remove it at, the, at this hose and not worry about the rest of that. And replace the line going all the way back up to the module, the control module for the ABS. Here's left rear right here. Um, as far as I can tell, they build the car around the brake lines. So we're what we're basically going to do is leave the brake line intact, cut it out of both ends, run new line, routed slightly differently, about nine feet of line, from front to back, do it probably in three pieces, about a three foot section from here, that'll be ending right down near the wheel here and then a straight section that runs about 50 inches about four feet and then another basically about three foot section and going right back to the wheel here so job one I want to disconnect this line I'd like to um, get this fitting out and to do that I'm going to need to uh, probably heat it up and turn it out of the brake hose because I'd like to reuse that brake hose and not have to redo that as well. Okay, this line is seized up uh, on, not only onto the brake line but onto the hose, but we're going to take care of one of those right now since we're not going to reuse this. So now we'll just heat this up, try to turn it out. What I've also done in preparation for getting the uh, heating this nut out is just put in a little paper towel in here, and it's just going to wick out, wick out some of the brake fluid that's still in the line before I heat it up. So in order to get this fitting out and reuse the brake hose, I'm going to heat it up. Have a fire extinguisher handy whenever you're doing this. Just do that. Okay, so we are with the use of that heat able to get this started.
I don't think without the heat we would have ever had any chance of getting this, this fitting out. Okay, so we'll turn that out the rest of the way and go out and find some new brake line and fittings. What I've done here is disconnect the battery. So we're actually going to be working on this part here, which is an electrical part. And right here on the, uh, the control unit for the analog brakes, we're going to be ta disconnecting this line right here. It's marked left rear, but I've also tracked it just to make sure I'm on the same one. And we'll uh, pull this off. There it goes. Much easier than working on the ones on the wheels. Uh, I've seen some information stating that if you disconnect this, um, it needs to go in and be reset. I guess we'll find out about that. The analog brakes don't work after we do this. I'm not really sure why disconnecting it would matter when there's no brake fluid in there, providing any pressure feedback to the unit anyway. And we're going to cut it off because we want to be able to match up this fitting when we take it over to the auto parts store. And also, it's... Okay, there it is. Looks like just a regular bubble flare fitting. So I have a 40 inch piece of steel line. And make sure you take the fittings in to match them up. Make sure you have the right flare fittings. This one has a, a bubble flare that'll fit into the brake hose end. So I'm going to bend this to the end. I have also have here um, the, the first bend, which is the only one I'm really going to try to duplicate um, from the brake hose. So I'll just t use this as a pattern and use my tubing bender you know, and bend it up this part to there and then take it out back to the car and uh, make the rest of it fit. Okay, so I'm going to lay this out here. This is just the way I do it here. And it's like I said, it doesn't have to be exact, but I try to get it close. I just make a mark kind of where the middle of the first bend is. You kind of have to do it any which way you can. So I'm holding the nut on the bender like this. Bring it back. I check it. That's yeah, going to be pretty good. Okay, so again, using this as a template at, and mark it where you want the next bend to go. So I'm work on this bend. So I've got the bender going this way. And line up my marks. Okay, it seems to be headed in the right direction. Okay, so here we are with the first bend for the rear. And eh, we're going to take this out now. And okay, so one thing you want to do is protect the uh, the brake line. So I did put a, another fitting in there and with some tape over it to make sure it didn't, uh, it didn't doesn't get any contamination. Same thing on the other end of the replacement line. And tape it up with something. You don't want to damage that. Um, and also I was able to get the brake hose uh, out of the way here. The uh, mount the window to the wheel well out of the way with us. There's a bolt in there. So that's going to make it easier to fit this in. So what I'm going to do next is seat the fitting in here. And then we can bend it. We may have to pull it in and out a few times. Because we, we have to fit this. It goes inside a frame piece. But I want to just basically see how close I am to where I need to be first. That's not too bad. So now it's going to be a matter of trying to get these bends pretty much to contour through here. And one other thing, it has to go um, underneath this. It's basically a protective pan from the muffler. So I'm going to get all the bends pretty much where I want them. I have to make another one right here, about like this, and then I'll and then I'll um, get the final one that's going to follow along the underframe. Here's where the original lines are, which, by the way, I'm leaving the other lines intact. I'm not going to disturb these lines. So we got this brake line pretty much where it needs to be. Don't forget to put some never sees on the threads on the fitting. Got it down under here if you can see it. 
right and underneath this uh, little shield so we can do some more bending underneath there basically by hand okay now that we have the line roughly routed I'm turning our mounting you can see our mounting bolt that mounts this fitting that holds the brake holes in place big thing with the lines is make sure they aren't touching anything, that they can rub them over time from vibration. For the front part, the routing around the front, we've picked up uh, some flexible line here. This is nickel copper, copper nickel uh, steel alloy, and it's very easy to bend, and you need that here. So we're going to be going down through there. And one of the other things we're going to use here, we've got a fish tape, basically for electric. Again, make sure your battery is disconnected when you start poking around down there. We're going to try to get this tape, this fish tape, to an opening. Work it down there to the bottom. Then we'll tape the, uh, the line onto it. Make sure you uh, definitely tape off the ends here. Tape the uh, fitting right to the end and then tape over the opening because you're going to be feeding this line through. And you don't want to uh, mar it. Our fish tape routed down through now, through our path. It comes out down here. What we're going to do is we're going to follow the left front brake line, the way they've done that. So we're going to follow it along this channel, the channel right here, instead of the deep tunnel where the original uh, line ran. So the next step then is just to uh, attach the fish tape to the replacement line. And I'm just going to do that with some uh, electrical tape here. Okay, so we've taped this up now with electrical tape, taped our fish line. Uh, to our brake line. Okay, so we're going to try to pull this line up now. And from down here, I'm going to feed it while my helper pulls. Okay, go ahead and start pulling. We got it pulled up. That really wasn't too bad at all. And with a little help, definitely uh, made it quicker. So now down on this end, here's our line. So now all we have to do is uh, bend this highly flexible line around a new route. Okay, so we're using this rather malleable material here. I'm going to bend it. It's been so much easier than steel. Pretty much a 90. And then the second bend is going to be, I would say, kind of about here. Okay, we've got this line pretty much where we want it. So we're just going to turn it in. And I've also put Never Seize on here. The unlikely event that this line will have to be changed out again. There. Okay, the lines are uh, not touching. We're headed down. Okay, so here's our other end. And actually, what I'm going to do with this one is just kind of contour it and kind of use it right along the uh, this curve. It can come out maybe to about here, so it's parallel with these other lines. And then I just have to measure what's left, figure out a way to attach it to here, because it can't just dangle. I think I'm going to use some automotive clips on here and some some ties to keep it from keep it off of there a little bit. We don't want it contacting that directly. So I'm just gonna measure what's left from here to the uh, the other side, the other end, and uh, get a piece appropriate, put a couple of unions in there, be done. Okay so what we're gonna do is shorten this one up a little bit by bending it. What I have is a file here. And this just kind of shows how how nice and flexible this line is. Okay, so we've got our metric union in here now. See our turns where we shortened this up just enough where we can uh, put these two pieces together. So 
So I'm holding it with a half inch wrench. I'm cranking it good and tight here. It's my 12 millimeter flare nut wrench. We don't want leaks and or peep over here. I've also put uh, anti-seize on the threads and on the uh, brake line itself. In the event we need to take this apart. There. Okay. So, with everything tightened up, we can... Uh, we're going to have to secure the line, of course, and I've got a couple things I need to do to that. We need to secure it to fill it, bleed it, and then uh, drive it. So what we're going to do to hang this, I'm, I'm using the existing the plastic hangers. Drilled a small hole in there. I've got some galvanized wire, steel wire. Okay, so I've got some uh, quarter inch vinyl tubing here. And I cut some little pieces out. And then also cut a slit along one edge like that. So what we're going to do is slip that over our brake line, like so. And then with the small hole that we drilled, the small hole that we drilled in this this um, old holder, where the old lines remain undisturbed, we're going to uh, pass a little galvanized wire through here. There it is. And then one on each side of our brake hose. I'll check this from time to time to make sure it's still intact, that the weather hasn't gotten the best of it. We'll just twist this on. And they provide a little bit of cushioning from vibration for our brake line. Now I'm going to do this along here, at least three or four different places. And bend this up out of the way. Okay, so there's our finished line on the back end. And looking back, we've got it attached in four or five different places, heading back to the front. Okay, so we're all done with this Grand Am. Replace the brake line. Replace the left rear brake line all the way to the back in three sections. We just bled the brakes, doing a uh, four-wheel brake bleed, which on this vehicle also includes the ABS. Um, I do have a write-up on that, step-by-step -step on my website, if you want to take a look at that. Got it all topped off. And ready to roll. Thanks for watching this video.